Well, welcome everyone. Glad you are here. It is uh, the beginning of the end of our worship week here at St. Peter's, and we're honored to have you with us and welcome you home to St. Peter's. The reason my eyes are lower and to the right is because I am in the process of calling up our Facebook live feed, and we look forward to welcome every, welcoming everyone home to Fellowship in Christ as we engage in morning prayer. All right, we are live. If you are watching on Facebook, please do leave your comments in the shared chat area, the live chat area, and uh, we'll make sure those get into the um, into the intercessions and thanksgivings at the end of this service. If you're watching on YouTube later, please include your intercessions and thanksgivings in the remarks. We'll make sure those get prayed over at the next service, which will be evening prayer at 5 p.m. Please like and subscribe and hit the bell for notifications. We appreciate all those thumbs up, even as we encourage hands together in prayer. Um, today, we are in the end of the first week after the Epiphany, and it is the Feast of Hilary of Poitiers. Uh, Laura, what do you remember about Hilary? He was born in the early fourth century to a pagan family. Um, I always, I always love really, a, pro, a prominent pagan family. It wasn't just a I, I was going to say, <laughs> and, and he received a good pagan uh, education. Yep. I don't know what that means, but that meant that he, means that he was educated in Greek as well as Latin. Probably read right. uh, the, the Platonic philosophers and learned from the Socratic method, and also was trained in rhetoric, which was uh, mm -hmm. the the educated classes uh, highest art you know that they could practice. So. Right. Basically, and that came into play did. Like, later on. It did, it did. So in studying, because he knew Greek and later was introduced to uh, the Old and New Testament, he left his, you just said it, Platonian, Plat Platonian Neo, Neo, Neo Platonic community. Platonic, yes. He wasn't from Pluto. That was just my mouth. And uh, converted to Christianity. He was uh, later... Um, a re uh, elected a reluctant bishop of the church. Um, he is a, a doctor of the church. Now, at that time that he was bishop, this was also the era of um, Arianism. So he was a staunch defender of the church against the Arian uh, beliefs, which uh, questioned Christ's divinity. Uh, because of these struggles, he was exiled for three or four years, um, and he still uh, he was still bishop, but bishop he, while he, in yeah, Phrygia. He, he administered his diocese in exile and also continued to battle his opponents. Uh, Arians took it very seriously, the argument that they had about uh, Christ was, was the son of God. However, um, he was effectively created as the son of God, not that uh, that co-person in the Trinity. Um, mm -hmm. So uh, they the Arians battled for territory, if you will, as they sought to uh, engage and work with um, each other to try to get their particular viewpoint across to the church. So they worked both within the court of the emperor in Rome and also attempted to take over as many Episcopal sees, Episcopal dioceses as they possibly could. Right. He, uh, uh, Hillary referred to them as antichrists, which I'm sure went over very well. Uh, uh, Emperor uh, not Constantine. Constantine was it Constantine? II. I knew. Okay, uh, he got he he was in the mix, and uh, ultimately um, he uh, Hillary was released from exile and sent back because it wasn't worth the fight anymore. Correct. He was. He and was he did a the... whole. Go ahead. Um, while in exile, he wrote. Uh, a treat treat treaties treaties there you go i'm good <laughs> <laughs> uh while I'm while out. in exile <laughs> while while in exile he wrote a treatise that would eventually become one of the foundation documents of the council of nicaea 
um, because of his particular talent with Greek, he was able to bridge many of the linguistic and theological gaps between the Latin church and the Greek church between the East and the West. The West um, was really struggling with the Ar Arian controversies. The East had effectively resolved most of it with regard to the, to the divinity of the Christ, um, but the questions still remained. And it wasn't until the uh, Council of Nicaea that really that, that battle got settled. Hillary was one of the ones who laid the foundation bricks, if you will, on the Basilica that would eventually become what we actually declare after the sermon, uh, which was installed at a later century to correct the heresies of any preachers and preachings and sermons that would have occurred around uh, the, the Christian church. So just a, a fascinating figure. Um, he was renowned for his uh, for his eloquence, he was renowned for his his carriage and his sense of, uh, of equanimity, if not ecumenical talent. Um, he also was key in resolving some of the Gallican controversies. These would eventually coalesce into the um, the later Avignon uh, papacies and some of the struggles mm. over the, the, the primacy of the throne in Rome for the primatial throne in Rome. So really some fascinating um, sort of, you know, beginning of the beginnings. He is the prequel to many of the controversies of what would become the fourth century and fifth century resolutions of the ecumenical councils. So we remember Hillary of Poitiers today. Bill, you take the second reading, Laura, you take the first and we will rock this. And uh, Bill, we, we are sorry you were in a, you were in a, a book closet at school, but you're, we're glad you're with us. And uh, even though it looks like you're down at the field enjoying a hot dog, um, just as the sun crests over the stadium line. So eventually you'll have uh, light on your face. God is spirit, and those who worship must worship in spirit and in truth. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry, and we humbly repent. For the sake of your son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways, to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on us, forgive us all our sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen us in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep us in eternal life. Amen. Lord, open our lips, and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Alleluia. Please join me for the antiphon and invitatory in unison. God is the rock of our salvation. O come, let us worship. Come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us shout for joy to the rock of our salvation. Let us come before his presence with thanksgiving and raise a loud shout to him with psalms. For the Lord is a great God and a great king above all gods. In his hand are the caverns of the earth and the heights of the hills are his also. The sea is his for he made it and his hands have molded the dry land. Come, let us bow down and bend the knee and kneel before the Lord our maker. For he is our God and we are the people of his pasture and the sheep of his hand. Oh, that today you would hearken to his voice. God is the rock of our salvation. Oh, come, let us worship. The first half of Psalm 18, I'll offer the odd. Please respond with the even. I love you, O oh Lord, my strength. The Lord is my rock, my fortress, and my deliverer. My God, my rock in whom I take refuge my shield and the horn of my salvation, my stronghold. I call upon the Lord who is worthy to be praised, so I shall be saved from my enemies. The cords of death encompassed me, the torrents of perdition assailed me. The cords of Sheol entangled me, the snares of death confronted me. In my distress, I called upon the Lord, to my God, to God I, cried I cried for help. From his temple, he heard my voice and my cry to him reached. Oh, I'm sorry. I stole your line. Go ahead, guys. 
from his temple, from his temple he voice, heard my voice, and my and cry, cry to him reached his, his ears. Then the earth reeled and rocked. The foundations also of the mountains trembled and quaked because he was angry. Smoke, Smoke went, went up from his, from his nostrils, nostrils and, devouring and devouring fire from his mouth. Glowing coals Glowing flamed, flamed forth, forth from, him. from him. Bowed the heavens and came down. Thick darkness was under his feet. He rode on a cherub and flew. He came swiftly upon the wings of the wind. He made darkness and his covering around him, his canopy thick clouds, dark with water. Out of the brightness before him, there broke through his clouds, hailstones and coals of fire. The Lord also thundered in the heavens, and the Most High uttered his voice. And sent out and his, his arrows, arrows and scattered them. them. He flashed forth lightnings and routed them. And the channels of the sea were seen, and the foundations of the world were laid bare. At your rebuke, O Lord, at the blast of the breath of your nostrils. He reached down from on high. He, he took, took me. me. He drew me out of, out of mighty waters. He delivered me from my strong enemy and from those who hated me, for they were too mighty for me. They confronted me in the day of my calamity, but the Lord was my support. He brought me out into a broad place. He delivered me because he delighted in me. The Lord rewarded me according to my righteousness, according to the cleanness of my hands, he recompensed me. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the book of Genesis. Cain knew his wife, and she conceived and bore Enoch, and he built a city and named it Enoch after his son Enoch. To Enoch was born Erad, and Erad was the father of Mahujael, and Mahujael, the father of Methushael, and Methushael, the father of Lamech. Lamech took two wives. The name of one was Ada, and the name of the other, Zillah. Ada bore Jabal. He was the ancestor of those who live in tents and have livestock. His brother's name was Jubal. He was the ancestor of all those who play the lyre and pipe. Zillah bore Tubal Cain, who made all kinds of bronze and iron tools. The sister of Tubal Cain was Nema. Lamech said to his wives, Ada and Zillah, hear my voice. You wives of Lamech, listen to what I say. I have killed a man for wounding me, a young man for striking me. If Cain is avenged sevenfold, truly Lamech seventy-sevenfold. Adam knew his wife again, and she bore a son and named him Seth. For she said, God has appointed for me another child instead of Abel, because Cain killed him. To Seth also a son was born, and he named him Enosh. At that time, people began to evoke the name of the Lord. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our first canticle, a song of wisdom, together. Wisdom freed from a nation of oppressors, a holy people and a blameless race. She entered the soul of a servant of the Lord, withstood dread rulers with wonders and signs. To the saints, she gave the reward of their labors and led them by a marvelous way. She was their shelter by day and a blaze of stars by night. She brought them across the Red Sea. She led them through mighty waters, but their enemies she swallowed in the waves and spewed them out from the depths of the abyss. And then, Lord, the righteous sang hymns to your name and praised with one voice your protecting hand. For wisdom opened the mouths of the mute and gave speech to the tongues of a newborn people. A reading from Paul's letter to the Hebrews. Therefore, brothers and sisters, holy partners in a heavenly calling, consider that Jesus, the apostle and high priest of our confession, 
was faithful to the one who appointed him, just as Moses was faithful in all God's house. Yet Jesus is worthy of more glory than Moses, just as the builder of a house has more honor than the house itself. For every house is built by someone, but the builder of all things is God. Now Moses was faithful in all God's house and as a servant to testify to the things that would be spoken later. Christ, however, was faithful over God's house as the son, and we are his house if we hold firm to the confidence and the pride that belongs to hope. Therefore, as the Holy Spirit says, today, if you hear his voice, do not harden your hearts as in the rebellion, as on the day of testing in the wilderness, where your ancestors put me to the test. Though they had seen my works for 40 years, therefore I was angry with that generation. And I said, they always go astray in their hearts, and they have not known my ways. As, I, as in my anger I swore, they will not enter my rest. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our second canticle, a song of true motherhood. God chose to be our mother in all things, and so made the foundation of his work most humbly and most pure in the virgin's womb. God, the perfect wisdom of all, arrayed himself in this humble place. Christ came in our poor flesh to share a mother's care. Our mothers bear us for pain and for death. Our true mother, Jesus, bears us for joy and endless life. Christ carried us within him in love and travail, until the full time of his passion. And when all was completed, and he had carried us so for joy, still all this could not satisfy the power of his wonderful love. All that we owe is redeemed in truly loving God, for the love of Christ works in us. Christ is the one whom we love. The Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Save your people, Lord, and bless your inheritance. Govern, Govern and uphold them now, now and, always. and always. Day by day we bless you. We praise, we your, praise name your name forever. forever. Lord, keep us from all sin today. Have, have mercy, mercy on us, Lord. Lord. Have, mercy. have mercy. Lord, show us your love and mercy. For we put, For our, we put trust our trust in you. In you, Lord, is our hope. And, and we, we shall never hope, hope in vain. Keep us steadfast, Lord God, in that true faith that we professed at our baptism, that like your servant, Hilary of Poitiers, we may rejoice in having you for our Father and may abide in your Son in the fellowship of the Holy Spirit, for you live and reign forever as one God in Trinity of persons. Amen. O oh God, the author of peace, lover of concord, to know you as eternal life and to serve you as perfect freedom, defend us, your humble servants, in all assaults of our enemies, that we, surely trusting in your defense, may not fear the power of any adversaries through the might of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Almighty and everlasting God, by whose spirit the whole body of your faithful people is governed and sanctified, receive our supplications and prayers which we offer before you for all members of your holy church, that in their vocation and ministry, they may truly and devoutly serve you through our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Please join me in a prayer attributed to St. Francis. 
Lord, make us instruments of your peace. Where there is hatred, let us sow love. Where there is injury, pardon. Where there is discord, union. Where there is doubt, faith. Where there is despair, hope. Where there is darkness, light. Where there is sadness, joy. Grant that we may not so much seek to be consoled as to console, to be understood as to understand, to be loved as to love. For it is in giving that we receive. It is in pardoning that we are pardoned. And it is in dying that we are born to eternal life. Amen. I invite your prayers of intercession and thanksgiving. Pray for Betty. Pray for Anne Marie. Pray for Anne, Matthew. Pray for all those who struggle with health in mind, body, or spirit. Give thanks for our feeding ministries as we return to the kitchen. And for the guests we are able to feed. We pray for the distribution networks as we seek meat for the poor. In the Anglican cycle of prayer, we pray for the Diocese of Jeba in the Church of Nigeria. In the Diocesan cycle of prayer, we pray for the members and ministry of the Committee on Credentials of Lay Deputies. Grant, O oh God, that your holy and life-giving spirit may so move every human heart, and especially the hearts of the people of this land, that barriers which divide us may crumble, suspicions disappear, and hatreds cease, that our divisions being healed, we may live in justice and peace, through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Please join me in the general thanksgiving. Almighty God, Father of all mercies, we, your unworthy servants, give you humble thanks for all your goodness and loving kindness to us and to all whom you have made. We bless you for our creation, preservation, and all the blessings of this life, but above all for your immeasurable love in the redemption of the world by our Lord Jesus Christ, for the means of grace and for the hope of glory. And we pray, give us such an awareness of your mercies that with truly thankful hearts, we may show forth your praise, not only with our lips, but in our lives by giving up ourselves to your service and by walking before you in holiness and righteousness all our days. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be honor and glory throughout all ages. Amen. Almighty God, you have given us grace at this time with one accord to make our common supplication to you, and you have promised through your well-beloved Son that when two or three are gathered together in his name, you will be in the midst of them. Fulfill now, O Lord, our desires and petitions as may be best for us, granting us in this world knowledge of your truth, and in the age to come, life everlasting. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thanks be to God. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen. Amen. Well, folks, thank you for joining us. As we remember Hilary of Poitiers, please like and subscribe and hit the bell for notifications if you're watching on YouTube. If you're watching on Facebook, please do follow us and stay up to date with what's going on as we post content, both live and recorded. We have a lot going on today at St. Peter's uh, meetings. Uh, you'll see a rector's vlog as well as a rector's blog post. And of course, our e-news will be going out. Join us for 5 p.m. evening prayer as we move into the weekend. And of course, as we move into the second Sunday after the Epiphany, Please do join us. I believe there's something about wine and the miracle at the wedding in Cana of Galilee being talked about on Sunday. So stay tuned to find out. We are live in person and live broadcast on Sunday at 8 a.m. Um, and then you'll be able to see that later on YouTube, where both the service and the sermon will be uploaded. As well, we'll be in person at 10 a.m. And of course, Sunday school is at 9.15 to 9.45. You know, a nice quiet Sunday morning for everyone. For now, Beloved sisters and brothers in Christ, take care and God bless. Bye-bye.